Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vina. And I'm working in NIC, which is an Indian government organization. Since last seven years, I'm working there. And today, my talk is based on network orchestration using blockchain. So here's the agenda. Uh, I will talk about uh, uh, permissionless blockchain and permission blockchain and which blockchain uh, is suitable for our use case. Uh, it means which blockchain we can use in network orchestration. And then I will talk a little bit about Hyperledger Fabric. And then we will talk about uh, multi-domain and single domain orchestrator. And then uh, I will talk about like, uh, I will give you some introduction about ONAP. And how we can use uh, a, a hyperledger fabric in ONAP. And the last, uh, we have a multi-domain orchestrator, a live demo, and I have used uh, hyperledger fabric in this. So let's get started. So why we need a blockchain in network orchestration? So uh, in a traditional system, uh, in telecom industry, uh, we have a very complex operational framework, and uh, in which uh, in which involves uh, many party involves like uh, tenant and uh, customers and uh, service providers. Uh, there is no end-to-end -end mechanism to identify the problems between them, and there is no uh, SLA management uh, uh, like. Uh, um, uh, unified solution. So blockchain provides a, a distributed trust between these entities and uh, it also provides, uh, so based on the consensus mechanism uh, of the blockchain, uh, everyone can trust to each other uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in one ecosystem. So, uh, so, uh, every, uh, so uh, any transactions when done through these entities onto the like uh, if we I, I'll talk about uh, a single domain orchestrator uh, that is own app which works for uh, in a single domain so every transactions uh, will be done onto the central repository so um, there is a always a issue of uh, trust between these entity so <clears throat> these this trust can be uh, uh, provide through the blockchain and the transaction uh, consistency uh, between these entity. So anyone can uh, check the transactions, what, 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 uh, what is going on uh, onto the, uh, that uh, uh, sing, uh, orchestrations. So uh, which blockchain for or orchestration, uh, whether we're gonna use uh, public or private blockchain. So first of all, uh, we have to identify the use case and then we have to uh, choose the blockchain, whether we're gonna use public or private blockchain. It's totally depend on the use case. And uh, so before going to choose that blockchain, we have to identify the difference between uh, a permissionless, which is a public blockchain, and uh, um, permission, which is a private blockchain, which is used for consortium. <coughs> so to identify the use case, uh, there is a very subjective uh, uh, case. So uh, I will talk uh, in a general term and a business perspective. So let's take a, a first from two, which is a permissionless blockchain. So permissionless blockchain, in this blockchain, uh, anyone can create and uh, access the data and uh, anyone can publish the uh, smart contract onto the blockchain network and it provides 100% transparency between the uh, entities who is involved into the blockchain. And uh, uh, it also provides a high level of, uh, uh, you know, an anonymity. So uh, there is uh, no way to know who is transacting onto the blockchain, who, uh, who is this entity. So uh, no, one can to, uh, no one get to know this, right? <clears throat> and anyone can uh, run a node into the uh, uh, permissionless blockchain net network. So uh, it's a 
it's a very uh, slow uh, permissionless blockchain network so it's very slow and scalability is very uh, massive challenge uh, in permissionless blockchain network like example bitcoin and ethereum so always there is a challenge of uh, uh, scalability and the uh, uh, speed of the network so come to the private uh, which is a permission blockchain uh, uh, it is very close to the ecosystem and uh, uh, because every uh, participant is well defined uh, into the system, right? So it also uh, there is there is no anonymity because uh, uh, every participant is well defined into the network. So every every uh, uh, entity no know, known to each other. So there is no uh, anonymity, and uh, the degree of the uh, decentralization and uh, transparency is uh, up to the consortium uh, use case uh, who gonna configure and run the blockchain network so it does not uh, uh, provide a mining concept to validate and execute the smart contract and uh, <coughs> <coughs> So it does not provide uh, uh, economic, uh, crypto economic uh, incentives to execute, uh, to running the, uh, the nodes into the networks as well. But both are, uh, both, uh, both uh, permission and uh, permissionless blockchain are very uh, decentralized and uh, uh, secure database. So, but uh, each with its own, uh, uh, capability and philosophy and uh, adoption uh, both are uh, you know uh, different from each other so uh, so in uh, network orchestration there it, it, it's uh, about a single domain so we cannot use a public blockchain in this so we have to take a, a consortium blockchain which is permission blockchain so because there is a uh, there is a uh, multiple entities involved in the uh, in a single domain so we have to take it uh, um, uh, that permission blockchain and uh, there are other uh, advantages to taking the uh, permission blockchain is uh, the scalability and the performance uh, is which is very fast rather uh, ex uh, rather than uh, permission permissionless blockchain so uh, <coughs> so hyperledger uh, hyperledger fabric we're going to use in uh, on app so it's a, a hyperledger um, uh, projects uh, on uh, on top, uh, in the second row, you can see that Boro, Hyperledger, uh, Fabric, and Grid, Indi, Arihoa, so to these are the frameworks of the Hyperledger, and it also provides the tools as well, like Caliper, which is a performance uh, a measurement tool, Cello and Composer, which which runs on top of Fab Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, it also provides Explorer, Quilt, which is now do, do, not working on this, and. Uh, so these are the tools and these are the frameworks. So we're gonna take uh, Hyperledger Fabric into the into the single domain orchestrator. So here is the uh, uh, transaction flow diagram of Hyperledger Fabric. So <clears throat> in this uh, uh, Hyperledger Fabric provides some. Uh, there is a member membership uh, service and uh, sorry and uh, it also provides a uh, ordering service and there is a peers uh, which can be endorsers and committers it also provides a hyperledger fabric sdk uh, hyperledger fabric sdk is uh, is available in uh, many programming languages like java node.js and uh, uh, golang right so uh, uh, in this transaction flow, uh, first of all, uh, 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 SDK applications make a, uh, have to enroll uh, with the blockchain network by uh, taking the, sorry, 
by taking the um, digital certificate from the MSP. So MSP provides a, a motion of uh, uh, identities and uh, so who gonna uh, provide the certificates to the SDK even uh, peers also involved and peers also have the um, identities from the SP, uh, MSP which is a membership service provider and uh, all these entities uh, get involved to each other uh, by, uh, by the digital certificates. So digital certificate provided by the uh, a certificate authority. Uh, it can be an external certificate authority. It can be a fabric also provides its own uh, certificate authority. So let's suppose um, there is a um, uh, there is a Bob wanna uh, take wanna ask uh, uh, that digital cer uh, digital certificate from the uh, fabric authority. Then it asks to the uh, fabric authority to give the give me the. Uh, uh, certificates and uh, then these certificates can be later used in uh, signing the transactions, validating and verifying the transactions. So the certificates play an um, uh, uh, important role in this. So first of all, uh, SDK will ask, uh, will enroll into the membership service providers and then it will create, after getting the certificates, it get, uh, it, it generates the uh, transaction proposal. Uh, by signing uh, with its public key and send to the uh, network uh, blockchain network. Uh, it means uh, to the endorsing peers, right? So endorsing peers have the uh, chain code and uh, so it takes the transaction proposal from the SDK and then it uh, executes the chain code on that and uh, it uh, generates the read write set against it and it also uh, sign the output of the transaction, right? After executing the uh, smart contract, uh, some output will come out and then it uh, sign uh, that output and send back to the SDK application. And then this endorse response back to the uh, SDK application, then SDK application uh, broadcast this uh, signed endorse uh, out, uh, response to the ordering service. So ordering service, like uh, here is only uh, uh, four nodes of ordering service. Uh, it can be more than four, it, it's depend on the uh, configuration and architecture level. So it's totally depend on the use case and the, uh, the number of resources available uh, for the use case. So it, uh, broadcast that uh, endorse response to the uh, ordering service and then ordering service take the uh, take every uh, endorse transaction and uh, keep it into the blog and uh, for uh, <coughs> actually ordering service uh, keep a batch of transactions into a blog and then uh, these blogs, uh, I mean, these uh, transactions are ordered into the blog, and these blogs send to the uh, committing peers. So um, these committing peers take the uh, blog from the endorsers, and then uh, it validates against the endorsement policy, which is available into the peer, and uh, it. Uh, uh, it validates and uh, it's check uh, what kind of endorsement policy was used at that uh, at the time of uh, execution of a smart contract means uh, uh, sorry so <coughs> so it takes the uh, sorry working. So it's take the uh, uh, order transaction from the order and validates against the endorsement policy. And then uh, it, uh, uh, let's suppose uh, it, uh, whether this transaction is validated or not, it's committed onto the ledger, right? And uh, endorse uh, ordering service is also providing the uh, double, uh, 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 like uh, 
uh, which is which is called uh, um, double spending uh, issue. It also resolves because uh, uh, let's suppose a transaction one want to try uh, change the uh, element and let's suppose uh, simultaneously transactions two want to uh, change the same attribute and that time these transactions uh, has been uh, ordered into the block and then block will be uh, uh, ex uh, executed by the committing peers like a transaction it will uh, validate transaction one means uh, transaction one has been modified that element and then transaction two once come at the validation phase it, it checks that uh, transaction one already uh, modified that so it automatically rejects the transaction two so it also uh, removes the um, double spending issue uh, of the uh, data on the data so it's so so uh, we have in hap uh, fab uh, fabric we have peers and uh, each peers uh, can have a smart contract uh, which is uh, a chain code in our hap ledger fabric terms uh, it it uh, every peers has its own ledger and uh, um, so all uh, peers is connected to the channel on some channel because uh, it's a it is a consortium and uh, uh, let's suppose uh, uh, there are three organization one two three one two uh, do business with either each other then uh, uh, multiple channels will be created and let's suppose uh, organization one two three is connected to channel one so um, an organization one has a peer one and a smart contract and it has a ledger as well and this channel is uh, uh, connected with the ordering service as well so uh, uh, as i told you that peers and uh, peers also has their identity from the uh, msp service they uh, once uh, it is that uh, once the uh, con at the time of configuration of the blockchain network, it asks the um, certificates from the MSP. So every peer has its own identity, and uh, every peer is connected to the orders. Like you can see, in uh, there is uh, there is a channel C, and every peer is connected to the uh, uh, channel and order uh, that is. Uh, you can see here, order is also connected with the channel. So uh, it's uh, it was about uh, high pleasure fabric. So now comes come to the uh, domain, which is a single domain and multi domain or orchestrator. So here uh, we will talk about uh, uh, if we talk about single domain orchestrator, we are going to talk about uh, uh, Mano uh, or we can say on app. So inside uh, domain one, you can see there is a single domain. Uh, we are talking about a single telecom entity. Uh, uh, single telecom telecom organization. So uh, the, it is the architecture here for a single domain. And uh, on top of we have a on app and below then we have a VNFs uh, virtual network functions. Uh, it also managers uh, which uh, manages the services of the VNFs. And uh, at bottom we have Vim. Uh, so Vim is a virtual infrastructure manager. If you uh, I'm hoping that you all are familiar with the NFVI uh, and uh, component of the NFVIs. So uh, for multi-domain uh, orchestrator, we have a multi-domain orchestra on top of uh, multiple domains like uh, uh, there is a telecom, uh, Airtel, we have a telecom, uh, China mobile, like we have multiple domains uh, below that. Uh, multi-domain orchestrator and this is the uh, overall uh, architecture of the multi-domain orchestrator so uh, what is single domain uh, it, it refers to a single uh, telecom uh, company or uh, inside uh, in a single telecom company we have subdomains like we have a um, BSS support, OSS supports, and we have a tenants and customers and um, network service uh, providers, and we have a um, and that uh, uh, and, and uh, operators as well. So inside single domain, we have a, we have a subdomains as well. So 
so uh, the the single domain represents a new approach like uh, uh, it's uh, like for single domain if uh, i'm going to talk about on app it's uh, it's on app provides a, a, a network service onboarding vnf onboardings and uh, f uh, for the uh, various tele uh, uh, you know uh, uh, that service providers for which so it's come into the single domain so it's a uh, uh, architecture of uh, it's a uh, on app uh, in which you can see that we have a on app portal and left side you can see that we have a uh, design functions and right side you can see that we have a runtime and on top of that we have uh, e services and bss oss systems and big data to analyze and um, the data uh, inside the uh, on app so uh, uh, in on app we have a multiple uh, um, that we have a multiple components and modules inside on app like we have a uh, active and available inventory we have a service orchestrator and then we have a dca which is a data collection and analyst uh, analysis events which takes the uh, uh, events from the ves uh, which is a vnf event stream from the vnfs and uh, in the right side, we have a SDC, which is used for uh, VNF onboardings. Like uh, uh, it is the it is used at the time of the uh, creation of the um, uh, VNFs onto the uh, on app. So before going to um, let's suppose some customer want to uh, wants need a, a service, a, a network service, then uh, before that. Uh, everything has to be uh, running up onto the uh, on app like uh, um, so uh, sdc provides uh, uh, um, models as well for uh, boarding of vnfs and um, it's a models like uh, tosca model and heat model so uh, let's move on to the next slide so that we can get to know better so uh, it's a on app so uh, which is a service orchestrator and uh, it's a, a unified diagram like you can see at the, um, your left left hand side and there is the sdc which is used for uh, onboarding the services and it takes the uh, it, it it is a uh, it, it also provide a vid which is a, a virtual uh, infrastructure development for the uh, for the uh, vendors uh, VSP vendors so that they can uh, uh, upload uh, upload the models to the on app and uh, it's provide the models for everything like model for on VNF and model for uh, uh, model for uh, VNF uh, descriptors and uh, model for uh, uh, closed loop automations, model for uh, um, uh, network services, and model for uh, it's it basically provides a model for everything, right? So, uh, on top of SO, we have an on app portal and OSS BSS uh, systems as well, and uh, uh, it, it also provides the external APIs. So, here is the API uh, handler. Uh, which is the first component of the SO. And it has a uh, database, a data catalog, in which data catalog, all models are, has been uh, uh, uploaded into the catalog database. And there is a request DB. Request DB is used for uh, the uh, uh, incoming and outgoing uh, request status into the request DB. It has a, sorry. It has a BPL execution engine, which uh, uh, in which uh, uh, they are uh, recipe has been uh, maintained. Uh, recipes means uh, uh, the overall flow of the um, uh, services. And uh, uh, and below we have a controllers as well, uh, like VNFM adapters and controllers and VNF resource adapters for a multi-cloud. Uh, uh, currently, it is showing OpenStack. It can be a Kubernetes. Anything, it can be. 
So it is a high level architecture uh, you can see here. Uh, on top of we have a VID, you, here you can see VID is used for, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a GUI for the customers to upload the models onto the own app and it also uh, provide the uh, interfaces to the customers so that they can uh, 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 bring up their services onto the own app, right? So, So um, uh, we have a, as I told you that uh, in the left side, left side we have a design time environment and the right side we have a runtime environment. Uh, at the time of design time environment, uh, service pro, uh, uh, vendors uh, they, uh, can upload their uh, um, that uh, VNFs models onto the own app and uh, once these are ready and uh, network is running up, then uh, uh, customers can uh, request for a service network services and uh, so it uh, supports uh, uh, Tosca, Heat and Young model for the models to upload the models into the catalog. It also, uh, it also at the time of SDC uh, the models has been uploaded uh, it will be up, uh, it will be updated into the ANDI which is a uh, active and available inventory, which is a part of ONAP. So these are two main paths, which, uh, the design time and run time means uh, I told you that uh, pre-onboarding of the VNFs and uh, resource onboarding, we have uh, virtual function creations and after the um, VNF onboarded onto the, uh, through the SDC, they can be uh, sent to the testing team and then uh, for the governance approval. So too many roles are there at the, uh, at the design time. And uh, runtime uh, is service, is, uh, network service instantiation request and they, uh, add, when the request come to the uh, own app through the external API or VID, uh, it, it checks whether this uh, VNF services is uh, available into the uh, inventory or not. So based on, based on that uh, data, ONAP decides and takes the decision and will um, uh, bring up the services. So uh, instantiation and in, in, uh, infrastructure services like uh, through the VID uh, instantiation flow means uh, through the VID uh, GUI, uh, customer can um, uh, request for a network services. Uh, it can also call the external API as well. So here is the uh, uh, dependency between the uh, every uh, module of the own app. Uh, you can you can check here. Um, uh, here here is a portal uh, platform calling uh, A and A, uh, is wait. So. Uh, uh, there is a VID calling SDC and there is a VID calling uh, ANAI and there is a VID calling uh, um, that uh, SO uh, which is a service orchestrator. So main part of VID is uh, it, 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 it is used at the time of uh, design time, it will be used at the time of run time as well. So, uh, so you can see that it's a very complicated uh, uh, dependency diagram, uh, everyone get con confused. So. Uh, Uh, and uh, in, in the lower level, you can see that uh, active and available inventory. So active and available inventory will be called by uh, every module of the own app, like uh, uh, APC is calling the ANAI, SO is calling the ANAI, and um, SDC is also calling the ANAI. So it's a very complex diagram. You, you, you cannot grab easily it, but uh, it's for say. So on app uh, ANAI, on app ANAI is a uh, submodule of on app which provides the real view of the resources and services and the relationship between them. Uh, but it is a um, it is a central repository uh, means it is provided by the AT&T and, uh, and the, the every uh, uh, VNF onboarding and network services is defined into the ANAI as a assets. And uh, uh, based on asset, we're going to talk about uh, how we can create assets on blockchain as well. So, 
you can see that SDC is uh, uh, uploading the uh, uh, models uh, onto the ANAI. So ANAI is very huge and uh, very big repository by uh, at and uh, so, uh, so ANAI is also called by uh, MSO, DCAE and uh, uh, BSS OSS system. So it, it, it makes system very, uh, uh, very slow uh, in terms of calling one ANAI central repository. So, uh, so uh, ANAI means like uh, information supplied by ANAI need to be accurate. Uh, it means uh, uh, it is the central repository anyhow that, uh, but it has to provide the accurate information to the own app at the time of uh, uh, service creation. So it, isn't, it does not need to be uh, 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 invalidate information for own app SO. And uh, it maintains uh, the view and uh, it maintains the relationship between the uh, assets, uh, which we call uh, uh, like uh, uh, vendor uh, VNF uh, onboardings and anything can be uh, asset uh, in the on app, but uh, it is the relationship between the asset, assets it provides by NAI. And uh, um, so uh, this is all about NAI. So again, it is the uh, on app um, diagram, which uh, which uh, I saw you uh, I showed you to uh, previous slides, but uh, here. What I'm gonna uh, giving you as uh, with a blockchain, here you can see that uh, on the right side we have a blockchain. And uh, first uh, call is, uh, that is audit and SLA management, uh, which provides the um, auditability and SLA management between the uh, customers and uh, uh, you know, um, that uh, tenants and who are uh, uh, requesting for the uh, network services and after, get, after uh, getting the network services, they, they can be uh, valid for the, uh, for the uh, required period. So uh, everything uh, can be, uh, we can manage uh, SLA uh, uh, between the um, customers through the blockchain uh, rather than uh, writing separate programs into the own app. And uh, we have a service specification uh, uh, verification means uh, uh, as uh, once the at the time of SDC everything will be go uh, will be uploaded to the uh, ANAI and uh, we are taking some part of the ANAI onto the blockchain like uh, we are taking some assets onto the blockchain. So uh, as so call ANAI rather than. Uh, it, it can be called um, uh, that blockchain as well, so that it can get the information uh, as a distributed information. No one can tamper this information onto the blockchain. Like, um, uh, as I told you that ANAI is a central repository. Uh, we, everyone do, doesn't trust on the central repository, but uh, in this uh, uh, SO can call um, that blockchain uh, APIs and uh, rather than calling the uh, ANA APIs for s in some cases, I'm not uh, removing the ANA uh, uh, totally, but uh, I'm telling you that some part we can take onto the blockchain, some assets take onto the blockchain. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, once uh, the, the service has been uh, onboarded and has been instantiated through the own app, the uh, these uh, events can be uh, come up from the VES, which is VNF event stream to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, that uh, DMAP through their DMAP service and DMAP service sends uh, uh, the data to the ANAI. So rather than sending to the, uh, uh, sorry, it's sent to the orchestrator, then orchestrator make decision based on that uh, uh, events and send to the response to the, um, that, uh, uh, business support system for uh, for further uh, uh, that uh, operations. So um, so DMAP can call uh, blockchain um, a smart contract to give the information to the blockchain, and blockchain uh, take some um, uh, you know uh, uh, operations on into the smart contract, and then after uh, getting the output 
of that smart contract it can send to the uh, bss uh, to the bss based on the event uh, of the smart contract uh, and the last we have uh, sdc so as uh, I, I told you that as dc uh, we are uh, maintaining the assets onto the blockchain as we are maintaining the as uh, on app maintaining the assets uh, on ani so we are also creating the assets on the blockchain and it is very easy to uh, create the asset on blockchain and maintain the relation between them so uh, what we are uh, providing through the blockchain, uh, the solutions using blockchain, we can see that we uh, smart contract for uh, available resources and services for the BSS uh, and the OSS, right? So all resources and services are as assets, I, as I told you in previous slide in blockchain, uh, uh, as like uh, everything is asset in the ANAI, we are uh, creating the assets in the blockchain as well and uh, smart contracts provide automation as a limit management for BSS like we don't need to write the separate code for this and uh, uh, we don't need to uh, write that code inside the own app so uh, own app is already uh, busy with uh, multiple modules as well so we can take this uh, thing separate from the own app and take this onto the blockchain so that uh, uh, trust can be built uh, with the uh, BSS, OSS and uh, uh, between the uh, customers and vendors as well. So, uh, in, and uh, uh, for any uh, automation inside own app, we can uh, 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 write a smart contract for that as well. Uh, and the future of uh, blockchain smart contract like uh, we can manage the reputation of the VNFs like uh, uh, once the VNF has been onboarded and the service has been initiated on, uh, onto the VNF, uh, we can manage uh, like uh, let's suppose within a, uh, a particular time VNF get down and event has to be sent to the owner but we can manage the uh, reputations by showing that uh, this, this vendor VNF uh, reputation is this. Uh, in the in the um, uh, numbering, like uh, we are providing the numbering of VNF to the uh, uh, BSS, so that uh, uh, after, uh, before uh, initializing the uh, or instantiating the services through the customer, it can be uh, it can be uh, visible to customers, uh, so that they can uh, check uh, which VNF reputation is uh, better. And. Uh, 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 smart contracts uh, for provisioning the reliability between the SDC and SO uh, even um, it uh, provides the uh, reliability between each modules of the own app and uh, automation of validations at the service time instantiation by SO as I already covered this but uh, it also provides the trust between own app modules and the future expectation is uh, of uh, blockchain is uh, we can use blockchain in uh, authenticity from ANAF, which is a module of ONAP. So uh, this is this is the some part uh, I have created onto the blockchain. Like you can see that tenant asset, uh, there is a tenant ID, tenant name, tenant context. You can see so these uh, these assets has been created onto the ANAI. Same we are creating onto the blockchain. So uh, here is the uh, flow of uh, uh, sorry. So here is the flow of uh, registration and SDC distribution using blockchain. Like uh, uh, as as I told you that uh, uh, through the external API and VID uh, uh, external systems like BSS and OSS can create can upload their um, uh, vendors can upload their models to the own app. So these are the APIs uh, between them. And you can see that uh, um, that um, through the external API, SDC for VNF is sending to the uh, SDC module, and then SDC module send this information to the SO catalog and to the ANAI. So here, um, that uh, SDC uh, is when sending to the uh, SO catalog and ANAI simultaneously is sending to the blockchain as well. Uh, in term of asset I'm talking. And uh, once the SDC get the response from SO catalog and AI and blockchain is response to the uh, external API, then external API is sent to the uh, response to the uh, that uh, OSS, BSS uh, systems. So um, uh, with the distrib uh, you can see that uh, there is a distribution ID with all parameters. Uh, I'm not, uh, I did not uh, 
mentioned here. So, uh, it's a very uh, complicated um, uh, parameters. So uh, after uh, distribution of uh, um, that VNFs onto the on app, uh, and uh, so um, uh, OSS BSS can query that. Uh, uh, assets onto uh, through blockchain APIs directly rather than going to the um, SO and uh, ANI. So uh, that BSS OSS can call the external API, then external API call the blockchain API directly um, to provide the information to the OSS and based on this information, OSS can there perform their uh, further uh, operations. And uh, it is the uh, uh, service creation at the, at the runtime it means uh, uh, I have talked about like uh, how we are using blockchain at the time of SDC, now how you are using the blockchain at the time of runtime. So once the distribution has been done, uh, any customers uh, wants network services instantiations, then it uh, comes through the uh, OSS BSS, then call to the external API, and then external API will call to the uh, SDC for metadata, and then uh, external API call the SO for, uh, for requesting the service instantiations network service instantiations and then uh, as so we'll call the blockchain rather than calling the api it called the blockchain to get the metadata of the uh, of the uh, information about the vnfs and the services uh, which was uploaded at the time of sdc and then uh, uh, it uh, it takes the uh, response from the uh, blockchain and then it uh, uh, instead, it uh, sent the request to the uh, uh, controllers uh, of the own app so that uh, service can be instantiated and then uh, after uh, fulfillment of the services um, uh, by the controllers, the response get back to the own app and then uh, own app SO and then own app SO send this data to the ANI and simultaneously send to the data onto the blockchain like service instance ID you can see here. Uh, on, on the right side. So these information has been uh, updated onto the AI and blockchain as well and the same response has been written back to the external API and then uh, BSS system. So uh, here is the uh, service order uh, state tracking. Uh, so uh, BSS uh, can check the status of the uh, service has been, which has been instantiated through the SO. So it can call a blockchain API. You can see at the bottom that uh, it is calling the uh, blockchain APIs and in the bottom. And uh, so rather than calling the um, S, uh, ANI, the information can be directly given by the blockchain APIs to the uh, OSS system. So it uh, fastens the own app uh, functionality as well. And uh, here is the service inventory inquiry by the OSS through the blockchain. So external API will not call that ANI to get the information about the instantiated services and VNF on onboarded in the previous steps. It directly called to the blockchain and then get the response from the blockchain like service instance. Let's like suppose BSS won the the service instance like service instance ID sent by the um, BSS to the external API, then based on that service instance ID, uh, uh, data can be fetched out from the blockchain and the status of the, uh, that uh, service invent inventory can be given to the back to the OS uh, BSS. So here uh, I'm gonna talk about multi-domain orchestrator uh, as I talked about like own app. So we have uh, multi-domains um, like multiple telecoms uh, and we have a uh, multi-domain orchestrator. So multi-domain orchestrator is connected with the blockchain uh, through the blockchain APIs. Uh, what the um, uh, multi-domain orchestrator is providing, it's providing the end-to-end -end path between the, uh, uh, between two uh, destinations like uh, uh, we have a, we have some um, uh, office in uh, India, like we have some office in another country, like we want some end-to-end -end, uh, path between these. So uh, there are uh, multiple uh, telecoms involved in this. So, um, so multi-domain orchestra have a overall um, um, that uh, 
uh, view of the domains of each domains like uh, uh, what uh, what is the uh, uh, you know links between these domains so on a, so uh, multi domain orchestra have overall view of uh, the uh, links and paths between the um, that uh, multi, uh, that domains multiple domains so here you can see that uh, once the request uh, has been initiated so uh, first of all uh, first of all every uh, domain has to register itself with the multi domain orchestrator and uh, then multi domain orchestrator send this data to the blockchain uh, so that uh, trust can be built between these entities uh, because uh, uh, we are talking about the multiple domains and uh, uh, multiple domains are not going to trust uh, on multiple uh, on uh, mdo which is a multi domain orchestrator so we have to provide some um, transparency and trust uh, uh, between these uh, domains so we are using the blockchain here and uh, we are also maintaining the um, sla um, through the blockchain uh, smart contract and uh, we are also maintaining the automatic payout through the smart contract as well and we are also maintaining the multi constraint uh, of the uh, request uh, asked by the uh, any uh, client so here is the uh, uh, flow diagram of the um, uh here uh, the registration part has already been done so now uh, after registering uh, each domain sends their information like uh, domain name and domain id every every information related to the registration has has to be sent to the uh, multi domain orchestrator and then this information sent to the blockchain as well and then uh, it every domain sends their uh, uh, spo details which is uh, uh, staple paths uh, which is the um, uh, paths within the domains like uh, how uh, how many uh, uh, paths uh, within the domains so uh, it so uh, so uh, up to here uh, that uh, domain all domains has to be registered onto the blockchain with their uh, spo and links information to the uh, to the uh, mdo and blockchain as well so let's suppose if domain one wants the end to end path then it's sent to the request end to end request to the uh, mdo and then mdo will uh, calculate the end, uh, end to end paths it generates the end to end uh, path id and then it will send to this uh, end to end path id to the blockchain so that a domain can every domain can get to know that what's going on uh, onto the uh, mdo so it provides the, the uh, trust between these uh, domains so uh, here's the api flow uh, uh, that uh, domain and multi domain orchestrator and the blockchain uh, uh, i'm running out of time i think so uh, so it, it is the uh, etui uh, api flow uh, you can see later like um, a registration request sent to the mdo and then uh, service has been uh, end to end path has been established between uh, between two domains and then uh, for a particular period of time and let's suppose that uh, any sdn get down and that pa that path has been breached then how uh, sla will be fulfillment then sdn send the uh, events to the mdo and then mdo will call the smart contract and the smart contract will autom uh, uh, autom uh, automatically pay out to the domains so uh, so this diagram is related to the uh, 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 links between the uh, domains the, these you can see in the yellow and um, red color there are the multiple uh, links between uh, two domains it provides a uh, um, multi constraint uh, quality parameter as well so uh, this is over uh, i don't have time for a demo so that i can show you but uh, uh, if you have any questions you can ask me and this is my mail id we also running a telecom sig group uh, i want to tell you uh, about this as well that uh, uh, we have a, uh, a, a special interest group uh, of telecom uh, which is supported by hyperledger uh, and uh, linux foundations in this group in this group we discuss uh, how uh, we can solve the telecom problems uh, existing te telecom problems through the blockchain 
and uh, so this uh, so we have a biweekly calls on Thursday and uh, uh, if anyone uh, want to join this group uh, you are most welcome thank you So do you have any questions? Anyone? So this is the uh, demo I want to show you, but I don't have time for this. It will take more time. Uh, my question is, what's the advantage of using blockchain technology to solve the telecom problem? I think most of the problem can be solved or already be solved, but leveraging blockchain technology was the advantage. Yeah, it's providing the advantages between the uh, multiple entities involved in the telecom, like uh, uh, there is a uh, trust and uh, you know there is no easy way to provide the SLE management between uh, between the telecoms uh, there is a uh, you know um, a long term process uh, to managing the SLE between telecoms so through blockchain we are providing automatic uh, SLE management so there is no long way uh, to uh, solve the SLE management and it also providing the trust between the entities is also establishing the trust between the entities. So, uh, so uh, here, uh, each telecom involved in the business, they are running their own node of the blockchain. So every, every telecom get to know that what's going on onto the network, right? Thank, thanks for the presentation. Um, Thank you. You used ONAP as an, as an example there. Yeah. For, 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 for this application of, of, of blockchains, then do you foresee this being totally transparent to ONAP, or is there something that should be done within ONAP project to support what you were describing. Uh, you mean to say why I'm using blo blockchain in own app? Is it supported by own app as well? Uh, is it? No, but the thing is that when you showed this one picture where you had the red arrows uh, yeah. moving out from yeah. uh, own app to, uh, and to the blockchain. Yes. Yeah. And so is it something that happens no. transparent to own app or is it something that own app should be capable of supporting? Uh, yeah, actually, it's uh, it is. Uh, I'm doing my own. So uh, your uh, your question is about uh, um, on app is capable to call the APIs of blockchain. Right. So why not? Uh, actually, uh, in on app, uh, as I uh, uh, saw you that diagram, the dependency diagram between the on app modules, uh, each modules is calling to each other, and there are a lot of uh, APIs, REST APIs. Uh, between these modules, so uh, why not we take the blockchain API as well? So that uh, why I'm taking the blockchain here, uh, I can uh, I can uh, give the information to the OSS directly rather than calling the external API and SO and ANAI. So uh, rather going through this, uh, we can call uh, blockchain API uh, uh, from the uh, external API and then give information to the uh, BSS as well. So it uh, it um, it overcomes the um, um, you know uh, slowness of the uh, on app. Uh, I was going through the uh, on app uh, documentation and the uh, that uh, um, that uh, issue related directory. Uh, someone mentioned that a and someone tried to install the on app and they were using on onboarding and uh, uh, service instantiation. Uh, so they are saying that uh, ANAI is very slow. It's not providing uh, uh, the data on time. It's getting very slow. So uh, what I uh, what I think that time that uh, we can use blockchain here so that uh, we can take some part of the AI onto the blockchain. 
So it also provides the uh, trust and the transparency between the modules and uh, transparency uh, with the, um, the, the customers and, uh, uh, and network service provider as well. So who was uh, providing the, uh, um, who is providing the VNFs onto the own app. Okay, so do you have any thoughts of bringing this ideas into the ONAP community? No, uh, recently uh, I was working on this, uh, and uh, in, um, I don't know will they, whether will they support it or not, but uh, I will uh, uh, present it to the ONAP as well. 